Today I'm going to teach you how to put Markov chains to real use through what are called transition matrices. Now if you don't understand what Markov chains are, press pause now and watch the tutorial on the Markov chain principle. To write a Markov chain as a transition matrix, it often helps to first draw out the diagram. As you may remember from the last video, a Markov chain diagram may look like this. All you do now is take the information given in the diagram and put it into a matrix that resembles an input-output matrix, if you remember that from production matrices. So rows of the matrix will re represent inputs while columns represent outputs. If you have this matrix, which corresponds to the transition diagram on the left, an input of B corresponds to an output of 0.6A, 0.4B, and 0C. In terms of Markov chains, this means that the probability that something in state B transitions to state A is 0.6, and the probability that something in state B stays in state B is 0.4, and lastly the probability that something in state B will transition to state C is 0. This can be seen in the diagram. From B to A is 0.6, from B to B is 0.4, and there is no arrow going from B to C. Notice that all of the numbers in this transition matrix are within the range 0, 1. They are probabilities, and that all of the numbers in each row add up to 1. You can think of this as the original state, the state indicated by the row, being split up into three separate states by the transition. The rules for applying transition matrices are 1. The transition matrix must always be square. 2. The outcomes of each experiment must be discrete states. For example, you can't be 80% state C and 20% state B at the same time. 3. Also, the transition probabilities, or the numbers in the transition matrix, must remain constant with each generation. Lastly, each row of the matrix must add up to 1. Now, what exactly do I mean by generation? Well, when using Markov chains, you start out with an initial distribution of states. Let's say at the beginning of the year, the drama shows shown on TV were 90% about teenage vampires and teenage miscellaneous monsters and 10% about actual people. This initial distribution would be written in a horizontal matrix called the initial probability vector. And it would look like this. This matrix is then multiplied by the transition matrix to find the distribution of the next generation. Every time the initial probability vector is multiplied by the transition matrix, we call this a generation. So if this vector is multiplied by the transition matrix, let's call it P, five times, or multiplied by the transition matrix to the fifth power, we can say that five generations have passed. Depending on the problem, this can mean different things. If the transition matrix represents a yearly change, then the resultant distribution or set of proportions after five generations would mean the resultant distribution after five years.